Today's class is entitled, A Heart Uncondemned. A Heart Uncondemned. We're going to be exploring 1 John, the third chapter. But before we go there, give me Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. Who's reading for me? I got you. Let's go. Romans, the 15th chapter and the fourth verse. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Is there a mic in the audience? Okay. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Go ahead. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Who can explain this? Everybody should be a scholar at Romans 15 and 4. Officer Jeremiah. Check, check. So it's saying, whatsoever was Hold on, what's your name again, bro? Officer Jeremiah. Legally, what's your name? Jeremiah Uriah Israel. That's, That's right. It. See how he said, he said it different, bro. There's not an IBL in there, though? There's not a... Oh, uh, yeah. I got to go back and add that. You got to add it. Okay, yeah. cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Good ahead, bro. Uh, no, saying, so whatsoever were written aforetime were written for our learning. That's this Bible. It was written a fourth time, written for us to learn from. Mm -hmm. And it says that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might, hope, might have hope. So we go back into the scriptures to get examples and understandings, you know, and knowledge about what our forefathers went through, how we can learn from it. Uh, you know, just different things like that. We get right. the understanding and we learn from the scriptures that we may have hope. Exactly. We hope fall back on the scriptures for everything. When we in tough times, where we go? The Bible. When we in good times, where do we go? The Bible. When we scared, when we in, when we have that spirit of fear jump on us, whatever issue may be ailing you, what do you do? You fall back on the scriptures because it's through them that we have hope. This is where we gain our comfort, right? So let's get started. Give me First John's the third chapter. First John's chapter three and verse one. This is the book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 1. Read. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Mm. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. Listen to me as an Israelite, especially those of you all that's just now waking up. You're supposed to feel damn special. You're right. supposed to feel above any, listen, the Lord has chosen us before all people on the face of this earth. This should cause you to walk different, talk different, act different, to associate yourselves with different people, different people that are like-minded like you, not them old friends you had back in the world. Okay, Give me real quick, give me Deuteronomy 10. It says, uh, behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. Deuteronomy 10 and 14. Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter and the 14th verse. Read. Behold, the, he the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's uh, thy God. It's the Lord thy God's. Read. The earth also with all that is therein is. Come on. Only the Lord hath a delight in thy fathers to love them. Mm. He, and he chose their seed after them. Read that again. Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them. And he chose their seed after them. Come on. Even you above all people. Indeed, you above all people. As it is this day. As it is this day. The Most High God has bestowed, bestowed his love upon us, the children of Israel. He chose our fathers and their seeds after them. So you damn right you're supposed to feel special. Someone say, you, feel, you think you're better than me? Damn right I feel like I'm better than you. God chose me. He chose me above all nations upon the earth. But church won't teach you that. Church got us thinking everybody's the same. Everybody's equal. We so daggone bugged out in what the world has to say. We have forgotten what God has told us. Go back to 1 John 3. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Come on. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and doth it not yet appear what we shall be? But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. All right. Somebody explain 1 John 3 and 2 for me, please. It says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. 
for we shall see him as he is. Who wants to take a stab at it? First John's three and two. Ramadja. When Christ comes back, uh, he's going to explain the scriptures in his fullest. So we're going to have the true understanding, well, f the full understanding of the, uh, of the scriptures. Okay, what else? Anybody else? Read it again, AZ. Beloved. If you don't know, raise your hand. Go ahead. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. Y'all got to realize the world right now, they look at you like y'all are niggas. Sisters, y'all are, you know what they call you. They have no idea who we are. They have no idea the power the Most High has bestowed upon us, the honor the Most High has given us. Because we choose to be different. We choose not to go with what the rest of the world does. We go against the grain. We decided not to be conformed with this world. It says, beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we, shall, what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. It says, for we shall see him as he is. Real quick, give me 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Read. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, Neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. See, before, when we were without, when we were in the world, when we were amongst everybody out there just partying, kicking it, you know, doing the most, we had no idea what the most high God has in store for us or had in store for us. In our minds, we just thinking, you know what, uh, ain't no telling what, what heaven going to be like. Ain't no telling if this Bible is real. Ain't no telling what's going to happen when we die. In our minds, we didn't think it was that serious to do what God said to do, to live how he told us to live. We didn't think it was that serious because you know what? They could be wrong. But guess what? I have not seen, AZ. nor ear heard, uh -huh. neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. On the people on the house, they can't even perceive what the most high God is going to do for us. Remember Christ said when he, he says, I'm going. Where I go, you can't go. He says, my father got many mansions, right? Mm. Y'all realize that's prepared for you. If you continue in this, if you continue in this walk, not being fake, not being phony, but are sincere, are real. It says, read that again. But as it is written, uh -huh. I have not seen nor ear heard Neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. That love him. That love him. What does that mean, that love him? Amir. Hey, shalom, leadership. Shalom. Um, it's basically keeping the law such a commandments. Okay. Thank you for summing that up. Appreciate you. Have a seat. Absolutely. Those that keep his commandments. They, can, they have no idea what's going to happen for us to keep God's laws and faith in his son. Read on. But God hath revealed them unto us. But we understand what's going to happen by us keeping God's commandments and doing what he said to do. Read. By his spirit. Come on. For the spirit searcheth all things. Read. Yea, the deep things of God. Yea, the deep things of God. This is why they don't see why it's so, we, are, we have a sense of urgency when we out here trying to tell our people to wake up. Because we know what's coming. We know what we have in store. We also know what's going to happen to those that do not keep God's commandments. We also know of the destruction that's going to come for those that have chosen not to do what God said to do, but live like everybody else. Even though that those that done come and say, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do what God said to do, but then done ventured off and fell off by the wayside, we know what's going to happen to them. That's why we have to continuously remind ourselves of this walk and this great calling that we've been called into, right? Go back. Matter of fact, give me um, Romans 8, because it says back in 1 John 3, for we shall see him as he is. Romans 8 and 28, please. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Read. Now we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Them that love God, like Amir explained, loving God is keeping his commandments and faith in his son, abiding in his laws, statutes and commandments come on to them who are the called according to his purpose from whom did from whom he did foreknow he also did pre predestinate 
to be conformed to the image of his son. Stop. Somebody explain that, please. Somebody explain what we just read. Read it again. Ain't nobody got their hands up. Verse 20. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Stop. Um, Aziel. Uh, is this what's going back to saying uh, he knew us in the womb, basically? Right. He knew uh, us we were, in the womb. Uh, we were predestined, meaning we were, our path was already known, I guess, in order to wake up. And we was going to keep his laws again. Okay. Something else. Anybody? Officer Jeremiah again. Uh, along the lines of what he was saying as far as he already, like from the womb, he already uh, pretty much sealed those that was actually going to uh, follow after Christ. Uh, and uh, it says, confirmed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So basically, we was going to follow after Christ. He already had it pretty much set up. If he was going to follow after Christ, he was going to follow after Christ. Okay, watch this. You're right. It says, for whom he did foreknow, he did also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among brethren. In 1 John 3, it says, uh, beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we do know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. And it says, for we shall see him as he, as he is. Us being conformed to the image of him is the walk that we have all began now. We want to be, Christ was what? Starts with a P, ends with an N. Has an F in there somewhere. Something about affection, I don't know. He was perfect, right? He was the image of perfection, right? Well, what are we striving to be? Matthews 548, be ye therefore perfect as our father in heaven is perfect, right? We are trying to be conformed to the image of him. Walk even as he walked, right? So we're the ones that are able to see him. The world can't see him. They don't even understand who Christ is. That's why they look at you. They don't see Christ in you. They see niggas because they don't know Christ. They don't know the son of God. Therefore, we've been conformed to the true image, to who he really is and what he was really about. It says, beloved, now we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we will be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Can y'all imagine in that day when Christ returns? Y'all don't watch, we done, they done made all types of movies, uh, Independence Day, Predator. It seems like the aliens always got dreads, and they kind of look like dreads. <laughs> y'all be hearing them, the, the, uh, I know y'all be watching that um, the science fiction stuff, the aliens be all tall and oh, yeah. listen to me, bro. They be dark skinned. Matter of fact, they call them grays. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't you mean blacks? You want to say black, you just don't want to say it. Right. Listen to me. Esau's terrified because he ain't, and that day he ain't going to understand. He ain't going to know. Oh, but he, he going to find out. All praise be to the Lord. First John 3 and verse 3. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. What is the hope that we have? Amir? No, no, no. Yedidiah. And every Salvation. man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself. Salvation. Okay. So salvation. That's what we hope for, right? Christ is going to return and we want to inherit the kingdom of heaven, right? It says, and every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself. Meaning what? He repents. He cleanses his way. He changes. He conforms himself to the Bible and not the world, right? That's how you purify yourself, accepting Christ for who he is and doing what he said, right? It says, um, and every man that hath his, hope in, hath his hope in him purify himself, read. 
Even as he is pure. Even as he is pure. Christ is pure, right? This is you walking even as he walked. Come on. Whosoever committed sin. Listen, there's no way you could come to the New Testament and think that we're not supposed to keep the commandments. Right. With those of you all that's new, what you're going to realize is, is that the so-called church done cherry pick the whole Bible. Nothing is in context. Nothing is as it's written. It's let's find some stuff that we can manipulate and try to pretend that, oh, we ain't got to do what God said to do. And it's easily dismantled. It's easily dismantled for someone who actually fears God, who's going to say, you know what? I just read that. Okay, I got to do what that says. But for the Negro that says, I don't care what it says, I'm trying to do me, you're not going to reach him. You're not gonna, they're not going to understand. All right, read on. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Come on. For sin is the transgression of the law. Isaac, what is sin? Give him a mic. What is sin? Turn, on, turn the mic on. Yeah, keep the mics unmuted. It is said transgression of the law. Sin is the transgression of the law. Why is that like rocket science when we're in the street? You will read it, <laughs> and they'll say, and you'll say, well, what is sin? Sin is going against what God, or sin is falling away good. from God. And you say, hold on, brother. Read it again. For sin is the transgression of the law. What's that mean, sir? It is doing contrary to what the Lord. <laughs> right. Doing what's not good. Are you serious? It's almost like it hurts them to just repeat simply what it says. What is sin? The transgression of God's laws. Breaking God's commandments is the definition of sin. Don't ever let nobody take you anywhere else. Okay? Read on. Verse 5. And ye know that he was manifest to take away our sins. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. Read. And in him is no sin. Somebody explain that. It says he was manifested to take away our sins. What does that mean? Joseph. He was sent back to die for our sins on the cross. Okay. That unblemished lamb. All right. Anybody else? Break it down layman's terms, Jedediah. He came in human form to show that it could be done. Okay, what else? Because when you say to the average person, see that? Nice words, nice words. Average, yeah. To the average person that he came to take away our sins, in their mind they think, that means I don't got to keep the commandments. Y'all realize your flesh is set against you. Your flesh is looking for an excuse not to do what God said. This battle that we've been put on is uh, spirit versus flesh. Carnal versus spiritual, right? So your flesh is going to try to find an excuse. Your mind is going to try to tell you, oh, it's okay. You ain't got to do this law. You ain't got to do that law. This law is not that important. This ain't no big deal. But the reality of it is what? You got to keep God's commandments. So when you're breaking this down in layman's terms, let me show y'all. Give me Hebrews. Hebrews, the 10th chapter. And read verse 4. When you're breaking this down in layman's terms, you got to make it plain so that there's no escape from what, what this means. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse Four. Four, right. So remember, it says, and ye know that he was manifested, that he is Christ, was manifested to take away our sins. Watch this, y'all. Read that. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. So prior to Jesus Christ coming, Yahweh Shai coming, it was impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to do what? Take away sin, right? Read on. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Then I said, then said I, Lord. So the Lord said he did not have pleasure in sacrifices. What did he want? Daniela? For us to keep the commandments and stop sinning. He wanted obedience. So the blood of bulls and goats could not take away sins. So as we read back in uh, 1 John 3 and 5, and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. So the, the person with common sense should read this and say, okay, 
Well, how could, if blood of animals couldn't take away sins, but they still had to keep the commandments, so Jesus could take away sin, does that mean they ain't got to keep the commandments no more? No, we did the sacrifice so that what? We sinned, we messed up. You know what, God, I'm sorry, but this, I guess this turtle dove got to die. <laughs> it's messed up, but I'm, I'm going to try my best not to do it anymore. Well, guess what? That turtle, that turtle dove's death, wasn't, that wasn't good enough to make your mind move. That, that, that pigeon or whatever offering it was, you know what? That life wasn't sufficient to you. So you know what? He manifested his son. Another man just like you to now come and die for your sins, for your transgression. That should now put you in the mind frame of, man, I need to, I got to do right. This man gave his life. He literally gave his life for some stuff that I did. That should now put you in a different mode of keeping God's commandments. That should now hit your conscience. To where you say, man, let me move right. Let me do what I'm supposed to do and take this seriously, right? Every time, think about it. That life, Christ, when he went down there, when he nailed, when he was nailed to that cross and he gave his life, he did it for you. It's that serious that now you, it's your, what does it speak, it says in uh, Romans 12? It's your reasonable service now. To what? To keep the commandments. That should be your mind frame. Uh, Read verse 10. Verse 10. Verse 9. In Hebrews or? Hebrews 10 verse, and 9. Hebrews 10 and 9. Then said he, lo, I come to do thy will, O God. Uh-huh. He taketh away the first. What was the first? The sac- animal sacrifice, read. Did, that he may establish the second. That he may establish the second. Now, does that mean murder went, went out the window? No, that means the... It, the, the form in which we are now appeased through God has changed. Our propitiation has changed, right? The stand-in has changed. The blood of, go- of goats and bulls, no longer. It's now the, the blood of uh, Christ. He was manifested to take away our sins. Drop that. Give me John 1 and 29. St. John chapter 1 and verse 29. It's not hard to understand if, you, if you're reading it from a perspective of, I want to do what God says to do. Not reading it from the standpoint, oh, I'm just trying to do what I want to do. John 1, 29. John chapter 1 and verse 29. Read. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him uh-huh. and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. Which taketh away the sin of the world. What did it call him? The Lamb of God. The Lamb of God showing you he is to be a sacrifice. If you under, when you understand the verbiage of the Bible, you get what it's talking about. Don't try to force your thoughts in there. It's telling you the Bible is extremely redundant, but we want to see different. The Lamb of God, that sacrifice, John knew what he was going to have to do. He says, what? Behold, the Lamb of God. Which taketh away the sin of the world. Which taketh away the sins of the world. His job was to become the, that sacrifice, the new covenant. That one for all that's going to cover all of us. No more animals dying. No more pigeons dying. No more turtle doves. No more bulls. No more goats. The son of God was manifested to take away the sins of the world. Give me Revelation uh, 7. Revelations, the seventh chapter, and started verse nine. Have I lost anybody as of yet? Everybody's with me, right? Sure, sure, sure. Revelation seven, read verse nine. Revelations chapter seven, verse nine. Come on. This is I be after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number. Of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne. Stood before the throne. Come on. And before the lamb. And before who? The lamb. The who? The lamb. The lamb. The lamb that came to take away the sins of the world through his blood. Right? Okay. Come on. Clothed with white robes. Clothed with white robes. And palms in their hands. So above this, you see the 144,000 chosen men that's going to lead this nation. Right? Those that were not defiled by women. They weren't, they weren't influenced by their wives. They understood the work, right? 
You have those 144,000 men, and then you got everybody else, the rest of Israel, whom you cannot put a number on. They came out. It says, and after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Come on. And cried with a loud voice, Read. saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne. That sitteth unto, uh, upon the throne, the Most High God. Come on. And unto the Lamb. And unto the Lamb. Who is the Lamb, brothers? Come on. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the, and about the elders, and the four beasts, mm -hmm. and fell before the throne on their faces, Read. and worshipped God. Come on. Saying, Amen, blessing and glory, and wisdom and thanksgiving, and honor and power, and might be unto our God forever and ever. And ever and ever. Amen. Read on. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? So the, one of the elders that were there, they, he leans over to John and says, Who are these in these white robes? Where they come from? Right? Go ahead. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. Because he knows it was a rhetorical question. Go ahead. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. These are they which came out of what? Great tribulation. This walk that we have, y'all, it ain't easy. We've been faced with all types of turmoil and tribulation. Bad things done happen to us. We all individually have caught hell, every last one of us. But guess what? Through Christ, we're going to make it. All of this is for a reason. All that you've been through is, is for a purpose. It says, uh, read on. And have washed their robes. It says, and I said unto him, sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes. Read. And made them white in the blood of the Lamb. How did they wash their robes and make them white in the blood of the Lamb? Joseph. They did what? And what? And what? Somebody help him. Amir. Exactly. Revelation 14, 12. Read that just real quick. It says... Um, where we at? These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Read that. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. These are those that keep the commandments of God and faith in Jesus Christ. When you, ex when you came into this truth, see, a lot of folks don't realize Let's say you come into this truth. You find out you in, you Israel. Okay, that's just one step. Why? Because we were taken from our heritage. But back then, they knew they was Israel. So they knew they were supposed to do what? Keep the commandments. But in their mind, they, they thought that their salvation was through what? Animal sacrifice, right? So teaching someone Christ and getting to understand the Son of God was, has been manifested and has now given his life for us, showing them they now put away the animal sacrifice and understand that Christ is the way. He is the door. No man giveth to the Father but through him, right? So they say animal sacrifice ain't going to save us. The blood of Christ is which is, which is going to save us, right? That's washing your garment in the robe of I'm sorry, in the blood of Christ. Washing your robe in the blood of Christ. That's you accepting him as what? Your sacrifice. He is the stand-in for your sins. Because if you did not believe that, you would not think that he was your sacrifice. Therefore, you'd still be looking for Jerusalem to build the temple. You still, like, like these old, I don't understand these Old Testament Israelites. Okay, so what do you do for your sins now? I just pray. Sounds like faith to me, buddy. Right. <laughs> right. Where the turtle doves at? Huh? Where, where, what's happening? What you doing? Where's your sacrifice? They have nothing right now. Which there was periods of time when we lost the temple as well. So I understand that. But the point is, is that the son of God has come now. And if you don't understand that, if you don't understand who he is, and you don't wash your robe in his blood, you're not going to get the kingdom, right? So that's what taking away of the sins is. It's not taking away the laws of God. It's what? This animal sacrifice has now been done away. And guess what? We can now come unto perfection. We are now able to be perfect in the sight of God because it's his blood that's going to wash our robe. Y'all understand? 
Okay, drop that. Let's get back to 1 John 3. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 5. Come on. And ye know that he was manifest, manifested to take away our sins, and in him so is no sin. In him is no sin. Matter of fact, where was we at in Revelations? Go back to Revelation 7. Verse 14. Revelation 7, 14. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation mm -hmm. and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Jump down to verse 17. Verse 17. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them. It's Christ who's going to feed us. In him was found no sin. I want y'all, the reason why I'm stopping here is for the fact that he literally came and lived perfect. So when it says we were conformed to his image, that is now what we are aspiring to do. Now, it's not that you're going to be perfect. You're going to mess up. We had a brother bug out at camp today over this same topic. But you are supposed, he, Christ is that example that you're supposed to be following, right? So in you, you following him, you trying to do everything like he did it. Did he sin? No. So you're trying not to sin. Therefore, Christ is, is, is your stand-in. He's your, he's your uh, give me some words for who you're following. He's just your example. He's, your example. he's what you aspire to be, right? The world don't understand that. For some reason, they say, yes, Christ was perfect. I can't do that, so I'm going to do whatever. End of story. Makes no sense. Go back to 1 John. Makes no sense whatsoever. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 6. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Uh -huh. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither know him. Read. Little children, let no man deceive Now, wait a minute, I'm, which I'm going to explain this here in a minute. Just read on, because I'm going to come back to this, kind of. Little children. Remember, it says, whoever abideth in him sinneth not. Break that down in layman's terms, brothers. Whoever abideth in him sinneth not. Malchiah. Mike. Just keep it in the middle then. Like in the prayer, it says, lead us not into temptation. Uh, if God is leading you or Christ or the word is leading you, it will never lead you to sin. Okay, absolutely. Absolutely. Hold, hold on, I want to I continue. We're going to come back to this point. Um, that was verse 6. Read verse 7. Verse 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. Even as he is righteous. Don't let nobody deceive you. We should have read this to the brother today. Yeah. Don't let nobody trick you. What is righteousness, brothers? <laughs> Deuteronomy 6, 25, right? It shall be our righteousness if we observe and do all these commandments this day, right? That is righteousness. Matter of fact, Psalms 119 says, 142, it says, Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Don't be deceived, brothers. It says, um, where is it at? Seven. Let uh, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Who's the he? Even as Christ is righteous. The same righteousness that made Christ righteous is righteousness. Why was Christ righteous? He kept the commandments. The Bible's redundant. There's no secrets. This isn't Bible codes. This isn't secret talk. But it is to those that don't want to do what God said. Hey, D, you mind if I say something real quick? Go ahead. Hey, go to 1 Corinthians real quick because it, it, it amazes me how, because it's simple. It's that simple, D. It is that simple that Christ's righteousness keep the commandments. So you want to be righteous? You want to be Christ-like? Keep the commandments. Go to 1 Corinthians real quick or 2 Corinthians 11. I'll read it real quick. 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 3. Say the same thing. It says, but I fear, at least by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. It's simple to follow Christ. Just do the commandments. Keep the commandments. But, uh, but for, for, our people, for some reason, our people in Christianity, it doesn't compute. It doesn't register. Because they try to, they think it's deep. They put, they put it on this unfathomable or unattainable uh, pedestal when... Christ said, be ye perfect. Our people want to hear that they ain't got to do nothing. Right. When Christ said, literally, you're going to deny yourself 
That is in every faction. That is in every form. You're going to have to literally deny what you want and do what God said to do. You're not going to be able to just go with anything and just live your life how you want to live it. You're going to have to change. Remember how he said you're going to lose uh, family? You're going to lose right. friends? He says the world going to hate you? you. Does that happen to these folks right now? No. 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 It's not. Y'all said you something? Yeah. You asked the brother, easy commandment, just to take his head off. He thought you was talking about giving me all your money in your pocket. No, he, he acted like I asked him to sacrifice his son. Right. Right. You're he exactly said, I'm, right. listen, we I kept 1 Corinthians 11 because the brother sat up and I knew, I knew the brother was saying we ain't got to keep the commandments. But for video purposes, I entertained it. You know what I'm saying? You know, okay, we say the same thing. Cool. Let's see if we can build. Bruh, we got to 1 Corinthians 11. It came time for that man to take his hat off because we out here prophesying. We out here talking about the Lord. The man looked me in my eyes. He said, I see it. I heard it, but I'm not ready to do that yet. I'm not going to do it. He said, you there, but I'm not. But he can go in any white man establishment and take his hat off. When you go in the courthouse, he go to his, he you go in that man's listen, courthouse, you respect the white man, you take his hat off. You take your hat off, boy. Yes, you do. But he wouldn't that's do a, it. That's a damn, and he, and he called himself a son of God. No. You asked him what his nationality was. He said, I'm a son of God. I'm, mm. That's my nationality. I'm son of God. He did say Hebrew, though. Remember he did say yeah. Hebrew? Anyways, uh, where we at? Verse 7. Read that. First John 3 and 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil. Of who? Of the devil. Come on. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Stop. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. I want y'all to remember this. He that it committed sin is of the devil. This, he, right here, John's talking about the battle. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Give me Genesis 3. I want y'all to remember this too. Uh, and also uh, 6. Genesis 3? Yeah. Genesis 3, reverse 14, please. Genesis chapter 3, verse 14. Hold on, sir. What's going on? Hey, man, these is war rooms right here. War rooms? Hold it up so everybody can see, sir. Huh? Hold it up so everybody can see. Oh, yeah, my Genesis 3. You got a, you got a portable Genesis 3. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so much highlighter notes and, uh -huh. and pen. And wow. I just told That's what's about. up. It's detachable, huh? Yeah. You got a breakaway Bible? <laughs> Hmm? Like windbreakers? Like, like wind. Remember you used to take the wind? <laughs> Go ahead, bro. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Give me chapter 6. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Just read that, read that. Genesis chapter 3, verse 14. And the, and the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Come on. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. Uh -huh. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Remember, 1 John 3, it said, For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. We read in Bible prophecy about the Son of God being manifested in Genesis 3. That he was going to overcome the damn devil. Colossians 2 and 14. And 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way. So when Christ came, he came to blot out the handwriting of ordinances, which was what, brothers? I can't hear you. The, the old covenant, also known as the sacrificial law through animals, right? It says, uh, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, meaning what? Why was it contrary to us? Lamagia. Because the punishment was death. Something else. 
which was contrary to us. Jeremiah. It was contrary to us because it couldn't save us. Uh, animal sacrifice could not save us. Blood, blood of bull and goats, exactly. animals. It could never make us perfect, right? That's why it was contrary to us. Read on. And took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Nailing it to his cross. So he took that which was against us and he nailed it to the cross through his death, right? Come on. Having spoiled principalities and powers. He having spoiled principalities and powers, read. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. How? Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over it. Eleazar. And he came back. Give me that. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. We're going to start at 55. He overcame it by what? By dying, he came and lived perfect. And he was that perfect lamb. That's, he was that sacrifice for, made for us. Manifested for us. So that when he died, we all now came under the new covenant. Now we're all able to make it to the kingdom, right? First Corinthians. That's how, that's how he, he, he triumphed over the damn devil. That was prophesied way back in Genesis 3 that he was going to trump him. And he did. Go ahead. 1 Corinthians 15 and 55. Read. O death, where is thy sting? O death, where is thy sting? Come on. O grave, where is thy victory? Where is thy victory? O grave. Come on. The sting of death is sin. The sting of death is sin? And the strength of sin is the law. What's happened now is Christ came and he gave his life. He died. He overcame death. Now, through his death, guess what? We're able to make it. Because all what Satan wants you to do, he wants you to live a sinful life and then what? Die. He won. He won. But death has no sting when you die in Christ. Because guess what? Now you come back like he came back. He didn't win. He didn't beat you. That's how, like I said, it was prophesied all the way back in Genesis 3. Christ fixed it all. All that we went through, all that we've, we've, we've been going through now, Christ overcame it through his death. Drop that. Let's get back to 1 John 3. First John chapter 3 and verse 8. Verse 8, yeah. He that committeth sin is of the devil, uh -huh. for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. So we understand how he destroyed the works of the devil now. Now I want to deal with somewhat of the beginning of the verse. Read verse 9. Verse 9. Remember I told y'all to remember what was that? Verse 6. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth have not seen him, neither knoweth him. Right? Read verse 9. Whosoever is born of God doeth not commit sin. Uh -huh. For his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Somebody explain that to me. Because now this seems like... Because you'll have a Christian that says, well, see, that means the laws of God are gone now. So I'm unable to sin because there is no more law. Is that what that's talking about, Yedidiah? Mike. That's going into uh, Proverbs 24, 16. A just man falls seven times but get back up again. Let me hear it. Proverbs chapter 24, and verse 16. It says, for a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. So going to 1 John 3 and 9, it says, if you of God, you're going to commit sin, showing that when you do commit sin, because uh, Ecclesiastes 7 and 20 tells us that every man sins, mm -hmm. but you don't remain in that sin because your conscience will tell you, I got to correct this, I got to correct this. And when you're the seed of God, you're going to correct it. But if you're the seed of the devil, you're just going to fall into it and give up. Right. This, this here, y'all, is the condition of the battle. What John is showing us, he's recognizing the battle in which we all partake in and he's he's making it plain as to why these things happen that's why when brothers tell you man you got the devil on you they're letting you know what's guiding you right now anytime you fall in the midst of sin guess who's guiding you right so when christ is the one you ain't gonna do that that's why we have to keep that spirit that the spirit of christ in you has to be stronger than the spirit of the damn devil your flesh you hear me 
It has to be stronger. That's, what, that's why we constantly fast and pray. Why we constantly come around one another. Why we want to build with one another. Why? Because we know Satan is looking to take us. Watch this. Give me John 2. John 2 and 1. Let's talk about the battle. We read this earlier. We read this at camp, and that thing said, whoop, went right over his head. My man just completely dismissed it. Yeah, 1 John 2 and 1. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. Come on. My little children. These things write I unto you. Same author. That, that ye sin not. That you what? Sin not. That you don't sin. Meaning what? Keep the commandments. Read. And if any man sin. But when you do fall, like yet a die just got through talking about, because a just man will fall. Read. We have an advocate with the Father. Come on. Jesus Christ the righteous. We have an advocate with the Father. When we fall, Jesus Christ the righteous is there for us. We have his sacrifice that he made for us, right? Come on. And he is the propitiation of our sins. He is the what? Propitiation for our sins. The what? Propitiation for our sins. Come on. And not, our, not of ours only, but also the sins of the whole world. He died for all of Israel. Now watch this, y'all. <laughs> Say it again. Pro, what? Propitiation. You right on there, boy. Look at you. I ain't going to hey, catch man. you today. Hey, not today. I ain't going to catch you today. <laughs> He's telling you don't sin, but in 1 John's the third chapter, he's saying, what? If you're in Christ, you don't sin. So he's letting you know what guides you. Paul did the same thing. Give me Romans, the seventh chapter. He's showing you when you fall victim to sin, right? It's Satan who's guiding you. We read that same thing before, which we didn't read it today, but remember what's that? Genesis 4, uh, the, the Most High said, um, which I'm paraphrasing it, but basically says, do you not know if you do well, you will be accepted. But if you do not well, sin lieth at the door and unto thee shall be his desire. Meaning what? You move according to what he wants you to do. That's when you fall into sin, when Satan takes over the driver's seat. Y'all ever see they be having in the movies and commercials and stuff, you see the, uh, they have an angel on this side, it'd be a devil on this side. To an extent, that's the battle. Your flesh and the spirit of Christ in you. Who's driving, brothers? Who's in the driver's seat? That's what you got to ask yourself. You say it's Christ? Okay, cool. When it's Christ, you in the spirit. You ain't moving like a nigger. You ain't moving like a thought. You moving like Christ move. But when that nickel get in the driver's seat, Satan got the wheel. You got that? Romans chapter 7, verse 14. Come on. For we know that the law is spiritual. Come on. But I am carnal, sold under sin. He, says, he knows the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. He's letting you know he's battling. He's going through it. See, we deal with, there were, these were real men in the Bible. These weren't, a lot of times we like to look at it like, man, these were all perfect people that never messed up. Man, listen, our forefathers messed up. Hence the reason why we're at where we're at now. We messed up. We mess up, but we got to acknowledge the fight and stay on our two feet and not fall to this nonsense. Read verse 15. Verse 15. For that which I do, I allow not. A lot of y'all, this is what you experience in your mind right now. A lot of y'all going to bear witness with what Paul is saying because this is the fight. This is the battle. For that which I do, I allow not. Read. For what I would, that I not, that that do I not. He wants to do right, but guess what? His body does something different. That's how it works with sin. You know what's right, but that thing takes over you, and you end up doing something dumb. Go ahead. But what I hate, that do I. That do I. A lot of y'all, and I just hate, is there kids in here? I am going to keep it PG since there's kids in here. But after that feeling leaves, brothers, that's when all the wisdom and understanding comes back. All of a sudden now, now you understand how stupid that was. Hindsight 2020. 2020. <laughs> you now realize, dang, what am I doing? You battle, you brothers battling porn. It's like, man, you in your mind, you can't see nothing. You freaking crazy. Then all, after the feeling leaves, you're like, what the heck am I doing? You feel nasty. Ew. <laughs> Look at me. <gasps> what am I doing? <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, 
huh? Don't no, he ain't talking to Paulo. <laughs> Read on. I'm just, hey, listen. I say it like that, but y'all know what I'm talking about. You go in your mind, you you know, came up with all different reasons on why to commit the sin. And once the sin happens, then you come back to reality and realize, dang, I was tripping. What the heck is wrong with me? He said, for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I do not. I'm sorry, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. Go ahead. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that that is good. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. Come on. Now then is it, now then is it, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. He says, listen, me, I know I'm, I want to fear God. But it's almost like what they call that multiple personality disorder. You got a whole, it's like, and that's just real. That's what it is inside of you. It's just. To us, a spirit that takes over the driver's seat. Now you out here bugging. And he knows it's the sin that takes over and causes me to do that which I don't want to do. Right? So it's not me that's doing it, but the sin that's in me. Come on. Verse 18. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh. My flesh, come on. Dwelleth no good thing. No good thing is in me. Come on. For to will is present with me. For to will, that's what is present in me, to do what God said to do, read. But how to perform that which is good, uh -huh. I find not. I find not. He's talking about his battle that he had with lust. Remember, he told you he had a thorn in his side, right? Go ahead. For the good that I would, I do not. Uh -huh. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Mm. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more that I, it is no more I that do it. But sin that dwelleth in me. Come on. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Meaning what? When I would do good, he finds there's a law that shows, no, you in, you in error. Fix it. This is, he said this was made to buffet him, right? Go ahead. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Come on. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind. And bringing me unto captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Come on. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? He said, O wretched man that I am. He, here it is. He, okay, I, I'm, like y'all, y'all coming to this, this truth. We all the same. You conquer one sin, right? You let go of that pork. I ain't doing that, man. That pig is nasty. You don't convince yourself. Look at them. Them, them crab legs, they got it on commercial, busting wide open with the juice flying all around. With the, with the butter, with the butter on it. They're going to drip the butter on that. Nah, that ain't even food. <laughs> the hell out of here with that. Huh? Okay? I'm good. What you mean? <laughs> Listen to me, y'all. I remember when I first came in, I convinced myself in my mind. I, look, I see the commercials. I mean, look at that. That's a damn insect. That ain't, no, that ain't food. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, damn, that thing look bomb. <laughs> Listen, uh, the, and whenever, and then when I think about that thought, my mom like, "You damn devil!" I'm frightened. I'm like, "You get the hell off me!" Mm. That's what y'all thought was doing with that crawdad that he had in his house. Well, we ain't gonna talk about that. That ain't there no more. <laughs> we ain't gonna talk about that. Anyhow, this is what you like. This is a real battle. So now you done came up. All right, you ain't eating pork no more. But guess what? You discover another law. That's in your members that you now got to overcome. Dang, you didn't even know you had the spirit of malice on you, mm. the spirit of jealousy, the spirit of gossip. Here it is, you warring. You got to, it's like, dang, every time I find something else, I got to fix. This is what Paul is letting you know. This is a battle that we're going to fight for the rest of our life. And as long as we still swinging, guess what? We in the fight. But when you lay down and you getting stomped out, you give up. You're not in the fight. You're getting your ass whooped. I'm just being real. They've done that in the world. Oh, I just can't. I can't do it. I'm never going to try. Every sin that you see and you discover, you're supposed to fight it. With everything that you got. Don't say, I'm just going to live with it. I'm just going to. You think that's what Paul was saying? No. But when that thing came back, he kept swinging. He kept freaking. He gave everything he had. That has to be our he mind frame. press. Huh? Towards the mark. Press See? toward the mark. This is a literal fight. fight for your life. And if you're not fighting, you ain't serious about this. All right, drop that. Uh, let's go back to 1 John 3. 
First John chapter 3 and verse 10. Come on. And this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Stop. It says, in this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. The children of God are going to press to do what? The children of the devil are going to press to do what? This is, this fight, this is when you, you, what's manifested is you see the children of God and you see the children of the devil. You see who's serious and who's not. Y'all going to see that right in here amongst you. Because this ain't just talking about somebody who just don't do, no. This is talking about all of us. You're going to see it right here. It's manifested the children of God and the children of the devil. Read on. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. Neither he that what? Loveth not his brother. Here it is. You got hatred for your brother. You just like an unbeliever. You hate your own. What is wrong with you? When we were commanded, that's a commandment. We can't hate one another. We can't have maliciousness towards one, one another. What is wrong with you? We can't be jealous of each other. Jealousy will cause you, will bring you to hatred. We can't be envious of one another. Envy is going to bring you to hatred. But for some reason, we think, okay, no, nah, I can live with this and feel this certain type of way about this brother, and then I, it is what it is. I'm going to live the rest of my life. I just don't got to like him. I don't want to like her. I don't got to. No, you got to love them. That don't mean you, you all, you know, everybody's not going to be on the same page. You know, hunky-dory, hey, come hang out at my house. But you got to have love for your people, for your brother, for your neighbor, Right? Read on. Verse 11. For this is the message that she heard from the beginning, uh -huh. that we should love one another. That we should love one another. This is the message that has been taught from the beginning of the Bible. Read. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. Did he love his brother? No. Come on. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil. Mm -hmm. And his brother's righteous. This is why you'll notice why these people that have this spirit on them, it's because of their own actions, their own issues. Because they're not right. Cain killed Abel because Cain messed up and didn't do what God said to do. Now he's mad at the person who's being reverenced as being righteous. How, how are you pissed off? This person, Abel, did what God said he did or was supposed to do, right? And Cain said, man, I'm mad. I'm going to kill him. That's how some people in here be thinking. Here it is, your life jacked up. You ain't doing what God said to do. You're not rolling in the spirit of Christ. Now you mess, you're mad because the, the next brother is being recognized for his works, for what he does. Now what? You want to take him down. What's wrong with us, man? That's that same spirit. That's hatred. It says, you're not, you of the devil when you move like that. Did we not just read that? Read on. Marvel not. Well, let me make sure y'all y'all are in, interpreting it correctly in verse 10. And this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doth not righteous, righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. It's plain. Read on. Verse 11. No, no, no. Verse uh, 13. Come on. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. Uh-huh. Meaning we, what? We should not be surprised that the world hates us. Why? What did Christ say? Uh, in the corner. Zakai. How you doing, bro? That was some excellent acting you did there, sir. I didn't realize you had it in you, bro. Yeah, we're going we gonna to discuss this later on tonight. Mm-hmm. Oh, praise. Yes, sir. Well, um, because we will suffer the same things as Christ did. Christ was hated. And so we expect to suffer. We should expect to suffer um, the same things that Christ went through and the same things that he dealt with. Right. Remember, Christ told us, say, the, the world hates you because it hated me first. Well, guess what? Who, guess who's, who's in you? Christ. So if the world don't hate you, trust and believe Christ ain't in you. So there's going to always be a level of hatred and opposition from the world. We ain't always going to be loved, y'all. We ain't always going to be, you know, admired as being this, that, and the third. They hate the Christ in you because they got the damn devil on them, right? It says, marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. Verse 14. We know that we have passed from death unto life 
because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Abideth in death. Give me John 13. St. John chapter 13 and verse 34. Let's, get, let's, let's go back to the commandment. John 13 verse 34. John chapter 13 verse 34. Read. A new commandment I give unto you. That ye love one another. That you what? Love one another. Come on. As I have loved you. you. We have to love one another like Christ loved us. That's a commandment. Yes or no? Yeah. So is there any room for malice? Hatred? Jealousy? Envy? None of that is in that. He says we are commanded to love one another like Christ loved us. Come on. That ye also love one another. Come on. But this shall all men know that by, ye... It says, by this, come on. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. This is evidence of you being in the truth, brothers. This is evidence of your walk with Christ if ye love one another. If you don't have this attribute, don't lie to yourself. You have yet to come into the fold. We have to love each other like Christ loved us, y'all. It's that serious. This isn't that we, we come on, man, give me a hug, man. You know, Paulo love hugs. We ain't about that. It's about us doing what God said. We apply the laws of one another. Look at you. Look, he's like, I want a hug right now. You want a hug right now, bro? Y'all stop. Give him a hug, man. Give him a hug, bro. You know, Paulo, he be acting funny sometimes when he don't get his. It's all right. But that ain't what the Lord talking about. Our love that we have one to another is we are applying the law, statutes, and commandments, and we all are working together. It's one body, one unit. What are, what are we trying to achieve? We're trying to get the kingdom, right? So we got to love one another in this thing. If, we're gonna, if this is going to manifest, if the kingdom's going to come about, it's going to be through us doing what God said to do, not through observation, us sitting around talking about, yeah, yeah. No, we got to apply. We got to do. By him, actions are weighed, right? Okay, where are we at? First John 3 and 15. Mm -hmm. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. A what? A murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath internal, internal life abiding in him. Read. Hereby perceive we... Why? Because that right there shows you Christ ain't in you. Christ said you're supposed to love your brother. If you hate your brother, you're a murderer. And you don't have life in you. You don't keep God's commandments. You don't apply the laws of God. Come on. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. We're able to see the love of God. Why? Because Christ gave his life for us. Y'all realize how hard it is for some folks to say, you know, I'm going to die. I'll die right here for y'all. You know how difficult that is? Question. Was in, did any of y'all see Christ? Was y'all there? Y'all know what I'm saying. We... He died for people that he ain't meet, let alone for people that was cursing him, mm. that ripped his beard. He got up there and said, forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. Couldn't have been me. <laughs> Tell you right now, Jack. <laughs> Christ said he had the ability to call the angels down. Look here, bro. Pulling his beard. Pulling his beard. I said, Lord, take them all out, Lord. No, I'm playing, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing, I'm joking. We got to have that same love Christ had for us, y'all. That's why it says there's no greater, what is it, no greater deed for someone who will lay his life down? No greater love, yeah. That's the type of level we got to come to, bro. Like I said, I look at, I look in the, I look at y'all, bro, and I, look at, I see my family, man. I die for y'all's kids, bro. Their situation, look here. Where, where's Shem at? Little Shem, Noah, Shem and them. I'll die. Listen, I'll die for these kids, bro. I'll die for some of y'all. But some of y'all crazy. <laughs> some of you sisters crazy. I might be a little hesitant, like, <laughs> Watch out! <laughs> I'm playing. I'm playing, y'all. <laughs> Somebody know he ain't. Yeah, I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> That's the level of love we have to have for one another, man. Okay? 
It says, read that again. Verse 16. Hereby perceive ye we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. That's the level we have to be at, man. We got to look at this thing like, listen, our lives are dependent on our love for one another, right? Our lives are dependent on us coming together and dealing with one another like God said to. If anybody's not on the same level as that, they're slipping. They have yet to come into this, to this marvelous walk that we've been called to. Read. But whosoever hath this world's good and seeth his brother have need. Come on. And shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him. Come on. How dealeth the love of God in him? Here it is. You have and your brother lacks, but you won't help him. What sense does that make? We got brothers that move in that spirit. You have, and you have enough to where you can give. But your brother is in need, and you like, man, no, uh-uh. That ain't the spirit we move in. Come on. Verse 18. My little children, let us not love in, not love in word. Let us not love in word. Neither in tongue. Neither in what? Neither in tongue. Uh-huh. But in deed and in truth. Give me James 2.18. But in deed and in truth. Let's not love in what we love. That's fake. It's the, I love y'all, man. I appreciate y'all, man. It's not real if you don't show in your actions. Your actions got to show that you love your brother. Let me tell y'all a little quick story. I ain't going to go into the details. Matter of fact, it's going to be real fast. But I've had situations where I realized I might love y'all a little too much. Yep. <laughs> I damn near died out here. Yep. Loving the flock. Facts. I think back on some of the things I've done, bro, and I really be thinking like, man, the spirit of God had to have been upon you to get you out of that situation. <laughs> I ain't gonna go into the details. Me and Ezra looked at each other like, "What's wrong He's with about thinking?" To go into the details. I was just saying. I, I was ain't going. Gonna, I ain't gonna go into the details. I ain't gonna go into it. Huh? I wasn't gonna go into. It. I was just looking at me and Ezra was looking at you. Was like, "What's wrong with him?" <laughs> we just like, what? Go ahead, bro. Who laughing? Stop it. <laughs> Whoever knows, you see, she knows. She knows. See, now we didn't. We shouldn't went into the. Deep. See there, James. Go ahead. Two verse eighteen. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. This is how we're supposed to move. Our faith is shown through our what? Which is actions. Faith without works is dead. Like he says earlier in the chapter, here it is. You can't tell someone, be ye warmed and filled, and you don't give him a blanket and some food, right? That, that just, it sounds good, but the reality of it is he has, he, I'm sorry, he lacks, you have, he needs, you got it. What are you going to do about it? This is why we have to physically go into our pocket and help one another, right? There's been situations where brothers came to me personally and it ain't a bit, okay, I, we ain't got to raise money. If I got it, okay, here, bro, go ahead. All praise to the most high. That's how we're supposed to move. Faith without works is dead, right? Give me Ezekiel 33. Some of us be on this fake stuff, bro. It ain't real. I'm going to show you all an example. Ezekiel 33, reverse 30. Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 30. Y'all going to want to highlight, highlight this, by the way. Also, thou son of man. The children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses. They're speaking about you, right, son of man? Go ahead. And speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. Hey, come, listen to this man. Come hear the word that cometh from the Lord, right? Go ahead. And they come unto thee as the people cometh. As the people cometh, read. And they sit before thee as my people. Read. And they hear thy words. They hear thy words. They sit for in front of you like they, what, God's people. And they hear thy words. But they will not do them. Oh, no, but they ain't trying to do it. Come on. For with their mouths they show much love. With their mouths. Man, oh, praises to the most high God. Their mouths, they real, boy, I tell you, that's our people to, the, to this day. 
with their lips, they do honor me, right? Their hearts is far from me. He says, for their, with their mouth they show much love, read. But their heart goeth after their covetousness. Their heart goes after what it wants to. Read. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one of of one that hath a pleasant voice. What sense would it make for everyone to come here on the Sabbath, listen to class, like, man, all praises, man, wow, wow, man, you're right, man, I got to do better, I got to do right. But you never change. You never switch it up. You're always, man, yeah, man, I'm finna, I'm getting ready, I'm about to, finna getting ready, could have, come on, man. How long are you getting ready or about to do something? How long? It says, uh, and lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice, read. And can play very well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, uh -huh. but they do them not. They do them not. They hear your words like a lovely song. They just hear like, yep, mm -hmm, man, man. They be clapping. Woo! They leave here. It don't apply nothing. Come on. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Mm -hmm. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. The scariest them. thing is, is that they, there's going to come a point where they're going to realize, damn, that was me. And I sat up and I played around. I was there. I was there. All I had to do was just put my hand to the plow. Everything was shown. Everything was put in front of me. Everything was made clear. All I had to do was just put my hand to the plow and put in the work. But I sat up listening to the song like, man, yeah, this is beautiful. Yep. Mm -hmm, this is dope. Yep. Mm -hmm. But never put his hand to the work. Don't let that be you. That's fake. It's phony. Drop that. Go back. We was at what? Verse 18? Verse John, chapter 3, verse 18. He said, my little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Our actions have to show. Our actions show where we at. Go ahead. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. Read that again. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. Give me Hebrews chapter 10. Hereby we know that we are of the truth. So whenever you are what? Moving how you're supposed to move. That it's not in words, but it's in actions. That it's not just a sweet song, a lovely song, but you writing the music. When that's you, it says, and hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. Who's the before him? Most high. Watch this. Go to Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10, start at verse 19. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 19. Hold on, let me get it with you. Let me get it with you. Come on. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiness by the blood of Jesus. That's how we want to be. We, when this thing, we want to be bold when we come before the throne, before we come before the Lord. Because what? We know that we did what God said to do. It says, do you not know yourselves? Examine yourselves. Whether what? You know if you in this or not. You know if you're playing. You know if you're full of crap. You know if you're fake. You know if you're phony. You know if you're sincere. You know if you're really about this. And when you know you're really about it, that's assurance of faith, guess what? You're able to go come boldly. Like Paul. Remember Paul said, listen, it's my time to die. I have fought a good fight. I have run my course. Right? He knows. He said, I know this laid up for me a, 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 a crown. Isn't that what we want to be able to say? Yes, Some of y'all right now, you unsure. Sisters, y'all too, you unsure. Some of y'all are having problems connecting. I'm going to tell you, there's a reason why you have trouble connecting and, 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 and fitting in. Because we all supposed to be of one mind, one spirit. It's because there's something you still got going on. There's something you still battling. There's something still holding you back that you ain't fully let go of yet. Read that again. Verse 19. Uh -huh. Having therefore brethren boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Come on. By a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us. For who? For us. For us. Come on. Through the veil that is to say his flesh. Come on. And having an high priest over the house of God. 
Let us draw near with a true heart. With the what? With a true heart. Let us draw near with a true heart, read. In full assurance of faith. In full what? Assurance of faith. In full assurance of faith. Come on. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. Having our hearts sprinkled from evil conscience. You know what that sprinkle's talking about? It's talking about washing. Having our hearts washed from, like, you see how you would, like, you get in the shower, the shower sprinkles on you, rains down on you. Same thing, from an evil conscience. That old man, that old knucker, right? Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. And our bodies washed with pure water. With pure water, that water of washing by the word, right? Come on. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith. We've all been given a position. We've all been given a, a, a job, right? A vocation to do. Come on. Without wavering. Without what? Without wavering. When you waver, you... You holding things up. You holding up the process. Imagine the wheel on on, on the train is wobbling. We can't we can't go to our maximum speed because the wheel might fall off. We waiting on the wheel to straighten up. Straighten your behind up, so we can move on. So we can press forward. So we can pick up more more uh what they call it cargo. What's some trains? Huh? No 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 the the thing that hooks up to the train. Freight or cars? I think they call them cars. Cars. We try to listen. We try this. We try to make this train wrap around the earth. And we can't do that if you have not come to the fullness and assurance of your faith. If you still wavering, if you still question yourself, if you still finna getting ready, could have about to marry. The brothers be on that stuff, man. Dig it, man. Watch, man. When we get back from this men conference, man, I'm about to getting ready, gonna go to get it. The hell. All right, don't talk about it. Do it. Right. It says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Read. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith uh -huh. without wavering. For he is faithful that promise. He is faithful that promise. Read. And let us consider one another. To provoke unto love and to good works. To provoke unto love and good works. You being a part of the body, if you have the ability to affect another part of the body, to provoke them to good works, why wouldn't you? Be that motivation. Because you need motivation at times. You need, you need those people to say, hey, man, get up off your behind. Let's get, let's get to work. Let's make it happen. You know you're stumbling. Get up. Shake it off. Wake up. Let's go, right? Provoking one another to good works, read. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Why would you think about it? A person in his mind who would forsake the assembling of themselves together, are they in the same spirit? No, they still checked out. They still lost in the sauce. They still trying to figure out if they love the Lord or not. Don't ever get it twisted. They still trying to figure out if they're going to serve the Lord. Because, again, this is a well-oiled a, a well uh, oil machine. We've all been knit together by the Peace. Most High God. You said adhesive. Cohesive. Like Cohesive. We've all been knit together. I like adhesive. We've been stuck together. God has put all these. Get that in Ephesians. Join. What is it? Join fitly. Don't let me butcher it. Is it Ephesians 6 or Ephesians 4? Uh-huh. Four sixteen. See, y'all are right. I ain't old yet, man. I Still got it. Still got it. Still got it. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16. Mm -hmm. From whom the whole body fitted, joined together. Fitly and joined together. Fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. That's we've all been fitly joined together. We've all been, you've been brought here for a reason, for a purpose. So when you going to figure that out? When you going to process it and now come into that full assurance of faith and understand your part that you play in this wonderful walk? When you going to figure that out? Where was we at before that? Hebrews 10. What, what was the last scripture 25. we read? Drop that. Give me, let's go back to 1 John 3. Read verse 19 again. First John chapter three, verse 19 read and hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. Again, this is us having that boldness because we know we are of the truth 
and assuring our hearts before him. This is this confidence that we have. And it's on our mind, on our conscience. We know what's up. We know that it's real. We know that it's not fake. Why? Because it's us. We've examined ourselves, whether we be of the faith, right? Read on. For if our heart condemn us. For if our heart condemn us, read. God is greater than our heart. Uh Uh-huh. And knoweth all things. Somebody explain that for me, please. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Malchiah. Microphone. So if our heart condemns us, which is our mind, our thoughts, uh, when we walk according to that and we're in the wrong, God is greater. He can still accomplish his mission, so to speak. Uh, something else. What is it? Is it Navon? I got it right. Look at you. See, you, man, you might be all right. Uh, it says, uh, for if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. God's commandments is greater than our heart. If we look back on those commandments, we know uh, it's greater than our mind. We, we uh, follow that instead of our mind, you know. Okay. Malachi. I'll take it from a different approach. If we think we can hide something from the most high. No. Okay. Lamadia. Yeah, he was confident, though. That's what I'm talking about. That's how you got to be. Matisse, he said, I'm going to go from a different angle. Let me hit this from this side. So, (laughs) go ahead. Our mind is desperately wicked, but the spirit of God is greater than that. Because the spirit of wanting to keep the truth that overshadows you. Okay, let's do this. I want to read these two scriptures together. Verse 20 and read 21. Verse 20, it's First John 3 and 20. For if our heart can condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we con- confidence toward God? You read that like a question. Oh, then we have confidence toward God. All right, go ahead, Zakai. Uh, it's going back into having that boldness and that assurance towards God. So if our hearts condemn us, meaning we become weak in the faith or we start to lack um, in having that faith, it says, verse 21 says, Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence towards God. So what's not having, if you're lacking in that confidence toward God, meaning that boldness and faith, then you, um, the word of God, leaning on God, Christ, God knows the things that you struggle with. Therefore, um, you're able to build Watch that this. confidence. Yeah, Hebrews 8th chapter. You, got, you want to try one more time? Go ahead. Okay, so the scripture says we walk by faith and not by sight. And faith is our understanding of the word of God, right? So if we walk according to our understanding of the word of God and it's wrong, then God is greater and he can correct us. But, no, okay. <laughs> Hey, three listen, strikes, you're out. He said it at the, at, the, at the same level he said the last one. And there was two different answers. You see that? But he was still strong with it. You all right, bro. <laughs> Give me Hebrews 8 and 10. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel in those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Okay. So what's on our hearts? What's supposed to be on our hearts? Okay. For if our heart condemn us, what is our heart? How is our heart condemning us? Huh? Okay. No. You know you wrong, right? You yourself know you wrong. God is greater. He know you wrong too, right? He says, and knoweth all things. So your heart, you know you wrong. What do we do when we know we wrong? We correct it. Beloved, if our hearts condemn us not, meaning you know you ain't wrong, you know you keeping God's commandments, right? This is that assurance of faith. Of faith. It says, then have we confidence toward God. Meaning what? We know we are in the right. We, to this day, will... We almost want to fight again, like that brother at camp. He read the, we read the scripture and he knew he was wrong, but what did he do? 
He fought it because he, he didn't want, God wasn't greater to him. He, he wasn't. He was like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to ride this out because I don't want to look a certain type of way. When he knew, he should have just took that head covering off. Right. We got to be real with ourselves. This is that not being fake. Your heart, your mind is going to tell you because the, the laws are supposed to be on your heart and you know you in the midst of sin. This is where godly sorrow comes into play. When you messed up, you know God is greater. What do you do? You pray to the Lord. You ask him like, David, please don't take your spirit from me. You are greatly affected when you are in the midst of sin. Whenever you know you ain't right, you know God is greater and he can take you out. So what do you do? You humble yourself. Let me get it, let me get it right. But when you know you walking right, guess what? You come, you come with that boldness. But there's been times where I'm like, man, I, can't, I don't even want to pray. I'm serious. Because you feel ashamed. You feel ashamed. You're like, man, I don't even want to pray. But Because you, you know you, you wasn't in the right. But when you are in the right, you come with that boldness. Because you know you're moving right. You're moving in the spirit. Be real with yourself. Okay? Be real with yourself. Be real with who you are. Don't be phony. Don't be fake. Be sincere. It says, for if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and know of all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. Read. And whatsoever we ask, we shall we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. We keep listen when we do what was pleasing in his sight. We know most high going to look after us. When we ask, he gives us. That's why we all got to make sure we in the right spirit, that we moving correctly so our prayers aren't hindered. This starts in our own households. He said he'll hinder our prayers if our houses ain't right. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It says, um, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Read. And this is the commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ. And love one another uh -huh. as he gave us commandments. Read. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby know we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us. By the spirit which he hath given us. This is all about being real with yourself. This is a heart uncondemned. You understand, you're sincere, that you're serious about this walk. You know who you are. We didn't read it tonight, but the scriptures tell you, examine yourselves. Whether you be of the faith. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth.